What's up guys, Johnny here, welcome back. Uh, today I'm super excited to share this little box with you. This little box which I built for just under $150 has completely changed the way I do practice. And I can't wait to share it with you. Uh, what's in the box? This box is an implementation of the Delta 5 Race Timer, an open source project that allows you to build your own lap timers that will even integrate with Lifetime. I'm going to include a link below to the GitHub page where you can find all the information you need to know on how to build this thing, how to configure it, how to set it up, and how to tweak it and optimize its performance. Um, in this particular build, I actually support eight different tracking nodes. Uh, just like things that you might see with the TBS Event Tracker where they support eight nodes or even the Immersion RC lap RF, um, which supports eight nodes. This thing is the same as those, um, but an open source implementation that can be done for about $150. If you compare that to the TBS event tracker system, which retails for $1,000, or you compare it to even to the Immersion RC Lap RF, uh, which are running about $600. It's really undercutting the market. It's really, really impressive how good performance you can get for so cheap if you're willing to put in the effort in building your own. Um, one nice thing is that if you are using Lifetime to run your events, this thing here will actually integrate directly with Lifetime. You can use it the same as if you're using a Lap RF or Event Tracker. Um, if Lifetime's a little bit more advanced than what you're looking to do, it does come with its own lap tracking software. And so basically what you do is it runs a little web server inside this box. You can connect to it from your tablet, a computer, a phone, whatever. And you can actually manage your laps, uh, put in the pilots, put in their names. Uh, so as it does laps, you can call out the name of the pilot. Um, pretty much standard functionality you'd see with personal lap uh, systems, but yet it also offers that lifetime integration so you can step up your game and actually run it like a, you know, an event that you typically see out there, a multi-GP event. Uh, one thing to keep in mind about lifetime though is it is currently Windows only. Um, so if you are running Windows, that's a great option, but if you're not, you, at least you can run the standard built-in web software that'll work across all platforms. All right, so why did I build this thing and why did I put it together? Um, I've actually been running the Immersion RC personal lap RF for quite a while, uh, maybe about five months. And one thing that I really like about running a timing system is it allows me to get some sort of objective data as I'm comparing different things. So if I'm comparing different motors, if I'm comparing two different frames, um, when I'm comparing two different cameras, I can run that back to back and look at those lap times and see if I'm seeing a consistent difference between um, one product to the other. If you guys remember back to when I did the uh, camera comparisons, there was a clear difference in lap times I was getting um, between the 4.3 camera and the 16.9 camera. If you even watch the laps, if you look right by the start gate, you'll see that personal lap RF. It really helped me get in that information. Now, why did I feel the need to upgrade from the personal lap RF to something like this, a larger, slightly more expensive package. The number one issue I had with the personal lapper of system is that you can't keep track of a history of your races. So basically the way the software works is you run a race. Once it's done, you say stop and you say start a new one. Once you start a new race, the previous race is gone. So what I'd actually find myself doing is I'd be taking screenshots <laughs> Um, of my iPad screen just to record what happened. And so I can go back and reference, all right, this time I had a 15 second lap, this time I had a 14 second lap and try to watch those. Now I can actually use live time, um, which automatically can upload all my times up to a website where I can check to my heart's content. I can look at all the different data, find my fastest laps, find my fastest laps for the day. It really gives me a lot of flexibility for tracking um, different settings and really seeing which one worked best for me. That was the biggest reason for this change. Another nice thing is that I think that the personal lap ref does a fantastic job of tracking two pilots. Um, it'll basically switch between, you know, watching one pilot, then watching another, then watching a pilot, then watching another. And that works great for up to two pilots. However, when I did try to track three pilots with a personal lap ref system, it did start missing laps. All the guys that are being tracked are pretty quick pilots, and it just was too much for that system to keep up with. This. I can support eight individual pilots. Each one has a dedicated tracker. It's gonna give me the best possible resolution for all eight and I can support all of us at once. 
that's a really, really, really nice benefit. All right, so me personally, when I'm running this lap timer, I'm actually running this within live time. Live time is the software, if you're not familiar with it, it's, it's the standard multi-GP lap tracking software. It's also based on things like RC cars and other types of racing. Um, so they have a great heritage. They're always making upgrades. They're always including new features. If you've seen any multi-GP events, the big events that are run by Joe Scully, he's always running live time. Um, he's a big contributor to feedback and driving what features come next for drone racing. Um, and chances are your local multi-GP chapter, if you're a larger chapter, they're probably running live time as well. Um, if you've ever gone to livefpv.com where it's tracking in real time what's going on with their race, that's all done through live time. So all those features that they're, you know, being able to take advantage of at those multi-GP events, I'm actually taking advantage of that for my practice sessions. Something that you may not be aware of is the pricing of live time. If you're running events with 10 or fewer pilots and you only have one timing system like this one here, you can actually run live time for absolutely free. That's a great way to get involved in live time. Um, as you start doing more and more advanced features like double elimination bracket tournaments, they start charging you, you know, $10 a month and up from there. Um, but being able to get in there and use it for practice is a really nice thing. And for the type of practice I'm doing, I don't need to support more than 10 pilots. I can run live time for free. If you've never used live time before, it might be a bit intimidating. There's a lot of different setups you gotta do. You gotta go in there and set up your class that you're racing. You gotta type in all your pilots. Uh, you have to set up a new event. You have to set up race tracks. You have to type in um, frequencies, mark pilots as being registered for the events. You have to generate heats. You have to have practice rounds and qualifying rounds and all sorts of seemingly confusing information. And it was a little bit daunting when I first tried it out, but what I'll say is, if you do want to get to using livefpv.com and tracking information and making it available to others to see all their stuff real time, it's not that much work to figure out. There's a lot of good resources online. The live time guys actually have a pretty good video series out there that'll get you up to speed in no time. And for me, it took maybe an hour of playing around with live time software before I felt comfortable with it. And now when I'm doing practice, I can generate new rounds, run the rounds, do everything I need to do, delete laps, create new laps, whatever. I can do it all very quickly where it does not get in the way at all. Now, another thing, I, I'm sure if you've done multi-GP racing before, you've heard things like, you know, on the tone, live in five, all that kind of stuff. And they start a race and you hear a, a beep. Well, live time lets you configure how long to wait between starting a round and doing that beep. Now, because I'm running the events and I'm doing it for my own practice, Basically what I'm doing is I'm setting a random time between 15 and 25 seconds for that start. So what I'll do is I'll go and I'll click start heat, put my goggles on, pick up my transmitter, arm my quad, and then once it says go, then I go. So I'm able to do that with many other pilots running heat after heat after heat all in practice and get us all running. That's one of the really nice things about being able to use live time is just how configurable it is and I've managed to make it work for my purposes. All right, so when I get out to the field, how do I put this into use? The way I built this, I actually have an XT60 connector here on the back. So what I'll do is I'll place this out on the field by the start gate. I'll run an ethernet cable from this device here all the way back to my computer which is about 25 50 feet away now i'm actually running power over ethernet to provide the power so all i have is a single cord going from my computer out to here i then have a power over ethernet splitter which splits out the power from the ethernet cable into an xt60 jack and then also the ethernet jack that plugs right in so i have one connection and i run it back i then run that off of a um, a power battery basically that can run this device for a hundred hours so i'm gonna have no issue with this thing dying on me in the middle of a day um, i just don't have to worry about it but if i'm somewhere where i can't use ethernet for whatever reason this thing actually supports Wi-Fi. So I can plug a battery in here and it can connect to a Wi-Fi network like a hotspot on my phone. And I can actually do lap tracking that way, which is really, really nice. Now, the nice thing about the way I did this with the, um, with the ethernet cable is I actually have a personal uh, Wi-Fi device as well, basically a little Wi-Fi router. And that sets up its own network, which this thing connects to. And then I also connect to that for my Windows uh, laptop. I'm using a Surface Pro laptop to connect to it. And no matter where I go, where I set up, the configuration's always the same. It's the same network. It knows where to find this thing in the same spot. And then that Wi-Fi router, I can actually connect it to my phone or any other Wi-Fi network as well. So I can start doing live streaming, uh, broadcasting information to live FPV, whatever I want to do. The really cool thing to me is that 
Everything's pretty much streamlined. I have the ethernet cable ready to go. When I put this thing down, run the cables out, boot up the computer, get it going. It takes me at most one, maybe two minutes. And for the amount of benefit I'm getting, that's more than worth it to get that data at a practice session. All right, so how well does this thing work, right? So I told you that if you want something similar, like a TBS event tracker, it's gonna run you a thousand dollars. And this thing I built for 150 bucks, it can't be that good, right? It turns out this thing has been absolutely amazing. In fact, at our local multi-GP chapter, we actually use the TBS event tracker. We've been using it all, um, and we've been using it all year long. I have to say this thing, so far, I've run about 15 sessions through it, has performed way better than what we were seeing with our event tracker. I just, what can I say? I'm blown away. For the money that you're spending, the accuracy it's had tracking all the pilots has been absolutely amazing. Um, so far, I've only really done three pilots at once, even though we're going to up to eight, but it's had no issue with those three pilots. Um, on top of that, what I actually did for testing to test out all eight nodes is I'd actually run uh, one quad on one frequency, run a few laps, stop it, change the frequency, run it again. And I did that through all eight and made sure it was tracking them all independently correctly. That worked no problem. Now obviously if many of them are running at once, maybe there could be interference, maybe there's an issue, but so far this thing's been rock solid. Um, a big issue we run into with the event tracker is both missing laps and double counting laps. And really I have not had any issue with this thing double counting laps yet. Um, I have had some issues where it was missing laps, but what I'll say is that the configuration is actually really simple for this. And once I started seeing the issue, it was usually very obvious to tell what to do to tweak it to where the issue went away pretty much the next round. So really easy to tweak it, very few missed laps. And when there are, it's really easy to change it. I'm just really, really impressed with this thing. I've ran this thing for Tiny Whoop Racing. I've ran it for five inch racing, micro brushless racing. I've ran it with 25 milliwatt, uh, 200 milliwatt, even 600 milliwatt VTXs just for testing. And this thing's handled them all flawlessly. I'm just totally blown away. The other guys I've seen, you know, that have seen this thing running it, they're really impressed too. Um, they want to invest in more of them. It's just an amazing bargain what you're getting for the price. You know, the Immersion RC guys and the TBS guys probably don't want you to know about just how good this is and how cheap you can get it. One thing I'll say too is I've ran this in a variety of environments. I've ran it inside my house in small areas. I've ran it inside um, an office area. I've run it inside a big dome. I've run it outside. It just keeps on working really, really impressed. Um, this thing has handled absolutely everything I've thrown at it. So what goes into making one of these things? What is inside of this magical little box? The first thing I'll start with is there's a Raspberry Pi 3 inside the box. That's the main brain of this thing. That's the computer that you connect to. That's that runs the timing software. That's what LiveTime will connect to. That's where the ethernet jack goes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it has to be a Raspberry Pi 3. If you're using a two or a one, it's not quite gonna have enough power to run this thing. Um, so you gotta be using a Raspberry Pi 3. Next, you have RX5808 receivers. Those are the same receivers you see in a variety of different packages. Like if you buy the Realac RX5808 receivers for your Fat Shot goggles, those are the exact same receiver modules. The RX5808 receiver is also the same receiver that's used in the open source LaForge project or the open source project which the LaForge modules are based on. Um, so it's a very popular receiver. You can get them very inexpensive and we actually have a dedicated 5808 receiver for every single node. Um, we then have an Arduino Nano device which speaks to the 5808 and it can change the channel, set it to what it needs to be, and it also monitors the RSSI signal. That RSSI signal is how it can tell where the quad is and when it crosses that line. So what ends up happening is, as a quad's approaching a line, that RSSI signal is to start rising as it gets closer and closer, and then as it passes, that signal is start getting lower and lower. And so once it sees a spike, in the RSI feed, it finds the maximum point and says that must be when the quad passed through this gate. That's the same way all these timing systems work. So the nice thing about that approach and having a, an Arduino Nano for every single RX5808 is that the Arduino Nano is actually the one monitoring the times of the laps. So the Arduino Nano is actually a real-time environment. It's not dealing with the more rich operating system like you have in the Raspberry Pi. So it provides a very accurate timing system to gather those laps. And then once it sees a lap, 
It can trigger it on the I2C interface back to the Raspberry Pi, which then informs all the different clients of what just happened. Um, so it's a really elegant solution. I know that they're working on versions which don't even use the Nano and allow you to build it a little bit cheaper. Um, but honestly, Arduino Nano doesn't add much cost. It doesn't add much size since it still fits in here. Overall, I think it makes it a fantastic uh, solution and provides really, really accurate results. Um, and then the other thing, like I said, you have to provide it power somehow. So for that, I use an XT60. I have lost the XT60 batteries. XT60 is kind of like a standard power adapter for me. And I'm able to use it for things like plugging into my power bank, Thanks. Um, plugging into my power over ethernet system. So that's just been a really flexible option. So I plug in here, that powers the Arduinos, the receivers, and also that Raspberry Pi. Um, so obviously in order to provide the correct power, I also have a five volt and a 3.3 volt regulator inside of here. And that keeps everything operating at the correct voltages. This thing actually supports, I think up to 36 volts input power, even though to run this thing, I'm actually running it, I think at 12 volts. All right, so if we break down that price, how did I get to $150? So we take a look, we have the Raspberry Pi, $35. We have the RX5808, we need eight of those and they run $6.99, so basically $7 for those. Um, we then have the Arduino Nanos. Now you can buy a, let's say cloned Arduino Nano for about $4 on Amazon. So getting eight of those, it's only 32 bucks. Combine that with the two different voltage regulators. I used uh, Palalu uh, 5 volt and 3.3 volt regulators. Those are a bit pricey, but they come in at about 11 and $9 respectively, um, which really didn't add too much to the price of this thing. You only need one voltage regulator for each. Um, and then inside I'm also running the Delta 5 PCB, uh, the version 2.0, which costs only $5 for 10 of these things. You put all that together and it runs you 148 bucks. Now, you might be saying, yeah, but you know what? You got these screws holding it together. You have this XT60. There's some resistors you gotta use to connect the receivers uh, to the Arduino Nanos, and that's all true. You also have solder and some little things like that. I had all that stuff as spare parts around the house, so I didn't include that in the price that I had to pay for this. But if you don't have those things, I'll include some links below. You can always go buy them. And even if you add all that stuff up, an extra XT60 connector, some uh, package of resistors, you're still gonna get into this thing at under $200. And when you compare that to $600 or $1,000 for the bigger, more expensive Brotherin, this thing's still an absolute bargain. All right, guys, so what can I say? This thing's super impressive. If you've never checked this thing out before, I highly recommend maybe someone in your chapter does. If your local chapter doesn't currently have a timing system, it really makes the event more fun. I can't tell you, um, even when we're using the event track at our multi-GP races, just hearing the current pace you're on, who's currently in pace to be first, second, third, how far back you are from someone else, it really makes the race more excited. It makes it more exciting to watch. It helps you as the pilot get involved in that race. It's a really cool experience. If you don't yet have one, I highly recommend trying this. It's such an inexpensive, cheap way to get into it. Hopefully you guys can pitch, pitch together some money, spend some time building it, and you know, really take your multi GP racing to the next level or even your practice sessions or just getting around with buddies and doing a little bit of racing this thing just makes it so much more fun and to me the price level makes it so anybody can get into it most of us are building our own quads these days so if you can build your own quad you can do the soldering in here it is a bit of work um, but nothing in there is really that difficult um, I'm gonna keep using I'm gonna keep using this thing for all my practice sessions. Help me for doing my YouTube reviews where I can say, hey, this thing's giving me constantly better results. Um, I'm actually running a session in the coming month. We're gonna be doing tiny whoop racing for up to 40 pilots. And we're gonna be using this thing for all the timing. Uh, we're gonna do heats just like you'd see at a Joe Scully event. We're doing best time to get seated and then it'd be a double elimination tournament after that. This thing's gonna let us do all those things and that should make it a whole lot of fun. So I'm finding lots of uses for mine. I absolutely love this thing. If you've ever wanted a timing system to take it one step past that personal lap RF, this is probably the one to check out. Um, if you're not interested in doing a little bit of work here to build this thing and you're not concerned about more than two pilots, definitely get the Lap RF and a personal system from Erosion RC. It's just dead simple and it flat works. But if you do want that next step, check this thing out. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. Let me know if you have questions. Let me know if you want me to go into more details on how to build this thing, more videos. I'd be happy to put those together for you. Um, anyway, if you enjoyed this, please like down below. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. And um, as always, I'll catch y'all next time.
Peace.